Hi everyone, this is Don Grimm. In this short video, I'm going to share a simple way to provide more meaningful results to self-insured clients. A few clients are only interested in loss reserve estimates. However, over the years, I found that most really appreciate understanding how their loss reserve analysis affects the financial results of their organization. So let's get started. A loss reserve analysis contains, at a minimum, an estimate of loss reserves at a certain evaluation date. For the sake of example, let's suppose that this amount equals $11 million as of year-end 2022. Most reports also contain the prior estimate of loss reserves, which in our example is evaluated as of year-end 2021 and equals $10 million. Many actuarial reports also contain a reserve reconciliation. That is, a summary of the components underlying the change in loss reserve estimates. Let's look at each of these components more closely. The first item, additional exposure, reflects the cost of insurance for the period between loss reserve estimates, which in our example is accident year 2022. Note that in this context, we're discussing loss reserves, so the quote unquote cost of insurance is limited to losses and loss expenses. In the reconciliation, additional exposure represents an increase to the prior loss reserve estimate. The next item, paid loss, refers to the actual amount of loss paid during the period between loss reserve estimates. Paid loss is subtracted from the prior loss reserve estimate since loss reserve liabilities are reduced as claims are paid. The last item, the change in prior period ultimate loss refers to the change in actuarial estimates of ultimate loss for the exposure period corresponding to the prior loss reserves. In our example, actuarial estimates of ultimate loss for accident years 2021 and prior are reevaluated based on information through year end 2022. This change can be positive, indicating adverse development or negative, indicating favorable development. And in the reserve reconciliation is in addition to the prior loss reserve estimate. Let's add some hypothetical amounts to our example. We're going to call these amounts actual since they are the amounts provided in the year end 2022 report and are actual from that vantage point. Suppose the additional exposure for accident year 2022 equals 1.2 million actual paid losses in calendar year 2022 equals 800,000, and the change in prior period ultimate loss equals a positive 600,000. These components explain the change in reserves from $10 million as of year end 2021 to $11 million as of year end 2022. An easy way that we can make these results more practical for self-insured clients is to calculate the resulting financial statement changes. The change in balance sheet between year-end 2021 and year-end 2022 equals $1 million. This is just the change in the respective loss reserve estimates. The change in the statement of cash flows is equal to $800,000, or the amount of loss paid in calendar year 2022. Perhaps most importantly, the change in income statement is $1.8 million which is equal to the $1.2 million of additional exposure plus the $600,000 change in prior period ultimate loss. These amounts help translate the information in the reserve reconciliation into familiar accounting amounts. However, we are still missing something important, a comparison to budgeted amounts. Budgeted amounts need to be determined at the time of the prior loss reserve analysis. In our example, these amounts would be obtained from the prior actuarial report as of year-end 2021. Let's review each item. First, prior loss reserves equal $10 million. This assumes the self-insured uses the actuarial estimates provided in the year-end 2021 analysis. Next, suppose the additional exposure for accident year 2022 was forecast to equal $1.3 million per the year-end 2021 report. Next, suppose loss in the amount of $600,000 was expected to be paid in calendar year 2022 
based on data through year-end 2021. Lastly, the expected change in prior period ultimate loss equals zero. This amount is by definition, since if a change in ultimate loss for accident years 2021 and prior was expected as of year-end 2021, it would have been reflected in that analysis. There are probably some unusual circumstances that would make this amount non-zero, but in most cases, it would equal zero. Given this information, loss reserves as of year-end 2022 from the perspective of year-end 2021 are expected to equal $10.7 million. Further, the budgeted financial statement changes would be a $700,000 increase in the balance sheet, a $600,000 increase in the statement of cash flows, and a $1.3 million increase in the income statement. The variance between the actual amounts and the budgeted amounts will be very important to our self-insured client. We calculate each item by taking the actual amount less the budgeted amount. Of particular interest is the difference in the actual versus budgeted change to the income statement. In our example, we see that the change in loss reserves between year-end 2021 and year-end 2022 results in a $500,000 hit to income. This is the amount that determines whether the loss reserve estimate we provide our client is considered good news or bad news. I recommend, as actuaries, we bring more attention to this amount rather than the traditional focus on loss reserve balances. Any actuary who has provided loss reserve estimates to a self-insured client is familiar with the focus on the change in loss reserves. Too often, this amount is conflated with other financial measures when it is just a balance sheet change and should not be considered in isolation. Before we go, I'd like to mention a few considerations. It is important that budgeted amounts correspond to your self-insured client's actual budget. It is possible that they are accounting for loss reserves incorrectly, and this is a great opportunity to add value by identifying any such problems. Next, timing issues may make the budgeting approach less practical. For example, when loss reserve estimates are evaluated and provided in advance of the financial statement date. Overall, this approach is an excellent opportunity to become more familiar with the way your clients manage their self-insured program and helps establish you as a valued advisor. Do you have any questions or comments? Let me know in the comment section below and be sure to visit me at archeractuarial.com. Thanks for watching.